Hi everyone, my name is T Zoom Zikantu Plakis. I was born here and I've raised in music, but I'm a lecturer here at the College of Music. And my interest and in what I do here, I teach about the indigenous traditional music. Because what happened, all these instruments that you see, this is a half of the quarter of the instrument that I do play. Because I taught myself quite a number of different instruments. But at this point in time, I would like to start first with an instrument, with an ancient classical instrument of the Kosa speaking people. But this instrument, it was first a weapon of the same people, a bow and the arrow. And then it later became a traditional instrument. But it was the same people also who started the musical instrument because they were the first to do the bow hunting. So after hunting, the same shape of the instrument, instead of now uh, hunt, when they gathering, they enjoy themselves by playing. And I'm going to demonstrate first the same way of playing this instrument. Because the same people, they don't bow like us. They strike on the, the stick on the string. And my mouth, I make it as a resonance. Because I want to amplify the sound because now this is how it sounds. But once I plug it into my mouth, it becomes louder. That's how the same people play this instrument. But now, if you look at the both instruments, this one has got no tuning peg. This one has got a tuning peg. As a musician, you've got to have this one because you play with so many different musicians. And you don't have to limit yourself only by having the typically a traditional one because you'll have a problem at times because when you have to play with other people with this one, which you cannot tune, it's easy that the string can easily break or the stick break when you are tuning it. So it's better to have a tuning peg. But the sound now becomes differ. This one is exactly the wood of this instrument that we call it umkhope. Also this one, but this one is the loudest because this one, it had to be strong because of the tuning peg. I cannot put a tuning peg here because this is going to break when I tune it because it's a very light wood. Now, if you listen to the sound also, just a demonstration of this. Let's listen to this one. The sound is going to be deeper because this one you can go very high. And the string that I'm using, this string I got in France, it goes from C to C. It does not break and it becomes very expensive for this instrument because now I've been having this for 15 years. I've been using the same string. It never broke whatsoever. So that is why uh, it's better to buy an instrument from an instrument maker who is a musician because I hate to buy tourist things. And that is why I decided to make this instrument myself because sometimes people, they can just give you, you know, cheap things and so on. So,
That's the beauty of Mkhobe. The whistle, it plays the melody of the song. And then when I bowing, I'm doing the backing, and then I lead now when I playing the whistle. Because sometimes as people could listen to the song but not knowing exactly what song you are playing if you are not whistling. But the minute you start to whistle, they start to recognize that, oh, this is song, I know this song, then they start singing. And just a short background of this instrument. This instrument is mainly played by women, not by men. It's only that I was very fortunate of happened to be born amongst the masters of this instrument. Then I was taught by my grandmothers, my aunts, and so on and so on. That is why I could play and teach this instrument called Mkhupe. This one is called Uadi. In the olden days, women would cut this, the calabash according to their size of their breast before making the Uadi. We use a different stick. It's the same string that I've talked about from France. It's very loud and then with a tuning peg. And the technique of playing this instrument is open and close. What I mean about open and close, this is the only part where I open. Here, I open and I close, and open and I close. Now, what you have to listen to the instrument is the harmonics and overtones. Because overtones are the one that makes us to sing. So this is this open, close that I'm talking about. Open, close, open, close, open. This is a kind of a technique when you have to learn the instrument, you know. You've got to start with that open and close. Then after that you've got to advance, you know, what you are doing. That's what. But the main, this instrument, also it plays by women. This is an instrument which our mothers, they will play for us before we go to bed. As you know, in different traditions, people, they read books for their children before they go to bed. But amongst the Costa speaking people, our mothers, they play this instrument for us to go to bed. When they undress the sound of this instrument, you'll hear sound that you've never thought of because now it goes from bare chest, from the instrument to the bare chest, and the sound and the harmonics are so beautiful, and it's called Uadi. I was invited in a bow conference in Deben, and then I happened to buy some of this instrument uh, from the choppy people of Mozambique. And then I decided to create my own one. It's, it's, it's exactly like this one, but the, st the, the stick was a little bit thinner than this one. And the grooves were very thin. So I said, I'm going to make big grooves. And also, I'm not going to half this. As you know, this is when you tighten the boxes, people, they use this. So instead of throwing it, you can also, you know, use it for a musical instrument. Because now this is how you play. Oh. 
It sounds so good. It's like frogs are just singing in the water, you know? Now, I'm going to play an African violin. <laughs> I always laugh uh, when I'm going to play this instrument because it's got one string, but the sound it makes, it's so beautiful. This one comes from Kenya, but it's used, mostly used by the East African countries, you know, from even northeast of Africa, you know, they use this instrument. Even West Africa, in many, dif many different parts of Africa, they are using this instrument. Also, we Kosa speaking people, we do use this instrument, but now ours is made out of a galantine, those old galantines. Uh, we never use wood. Uh, so in Africa, they use wood. And what surprises me is the tuning pack, you know? It, this looks like a dangerous weapon, you know? But, you know, <laughs> you know, and it's tuned it perfectly. When you need to tune it, you just tune it once, then it stays. So here's the instrument called Ndingi D. What I like about this instrument, you can play as many songs as you, if, if, you know, because the thing is this, uh, you've got to sing a song and try and find it somewhere, whatever, you know, because like one would say that, So you can play any song, you know? It's a matter of how many songs can you sing? How many songs do you know? How many songs can you transpose from your mouth to this instrument? So you need more time of learning the instrument. Once you learn the instrument, then you can do all that, especially for the children. Once children start to play this, they will develop songs that you've never think of. You know, and I always, this is what I normally do. I always teach about the children's song, so, songs that we grew up as young, as, uh, when we were young. Because that, it makes a child to learn music very fast. Uh, I found that when I was doing classical music, playing trumpet, yes, you learn all the twinkle, twinkle, little star, and so on and so on. But now I said, how about if I start learning some of the traditional songs that we used to sing when we were young? And I'm telling you, when I started doing that, Everybody who pass by, they know the melody. They sing with the melody, you know? So these are very good instruments, especially for the children, because it also takes them straight to violin. Once he plays this instrument, he will also learn how to play violin, and you'll find it not difficult, because now the four strings of the violin, now you've got to create that song that you are creating from four string to a one string, you know? But by doing, but by using your four fingers. And they call it a dingy D. Yes, now I'm going to play an instrument from Kenya. This one was brought by a friend of mine, a student of mine, uh, and it's a called lyre. But I'm also making this instrument now. All the instruments that you see I'm making except the talking drum. And uh, now, in East Africa, in Uganda, there are different there's an instrument called Amadinda Akadinda. Now I'm going to play the Akadinda style in this harp.
So that's the Akadinga. Akadinga, you've got a triplet, you know, because it's always... So always tri triplets. Now I'm gonna change now the Akadinda style to play the Amadinda style. The Amadinda is Gyopul, which is like. So there's a difference from from that one and this one. Oh. Now the Akad Amadinda is. That is one hand. The other one. Now mixing the two. So what is nice also, you hear this jing, is because the strings are touching the skin. Now, it also make that buzz. It's beautiful. So I tune this in pentatonic because I've got two, four, six, seven, but I always tune pentatonic like that is an amadinda, akadinda. Akadinda is that instrument. That instrument has got 17 keys. So then the smaller version of that akadinda is got 11 keys. So now you've got, on the akadinda you've got three octaves, as much as in the amadinda you have two octaves. So when you play with, you play double with the sticks, one interlocks and one plays also this side. And the pattern that I was singing, we call it the inherent pattern because no one plays. I'm not playing that pattern. It comes when I play. Because now the pattern that goes. So there's a part. I don't play that, it comes because one hand is playing, the other one. When you mix the two, you get now. The other one, that's the first melody in here in Petting. The second one. The third one. Only on these five notes. Only on these five notes. <laughs> That's this amazing, it's, it's amazing instrument. Only with five notes, you get so many different melodies. And then sometimes what I normally do with these melodies, I take people who play clarinet and trumpet on all the soft instrument, and they play below this. And it sounds like something that you've never heard in your life. That's what I like about all this, because 
these kind of songs, it teaches you about the ear training and to listen to the music, to the musical instrument. Because some other musical instrument, yes, you can listen to it, but this one, it trains your ears. There are so many things happening at the same time that you've got to differentiate, you know. That's why I like this instrument. Now I'm going to play the wind instrument. <laughs> 